Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this session. And in this session, I'm going to talk about the uh, ZCMT, which is a risk five uh, extension for co-size reduction. And uh, uh, let me introduce myself a little bit. Uh, I'm Hao, and I'm wor currently working in Sci5 uh, compiler technology team. And I'm working uh, with Gnu uh, Tuochen things. So uh, my work mostly uh, are working with binutils and a little bit of uh, GC, GFC and GCC. And the ZCMT work is uh, contributed by many people, and especially uh, in Bay, Kosum, and TLCT people. And uh, in sci-fi, we have um, guys that helps me to do the test and benchmarks and code review and things like that. So thanks all the contributions. And I'll separate this talk into five parts. Uh, first, I'll have a general idea of ZCMT, and then before we dive more in, uh, uh, dive more details in of ZCMT, we need some background that are relocations and uh, relaxation. And after that, uh, I'll talk about the ZCMT linker relaxation implementation, and then the, we did some benchmark about the call size, and we have some interesting and unexpected result, and we'll analysis it, analysis the result. And then uh, last, I'll have a, a slide to, to introduce another similar extension that called ZCMI. Okay, so for the general idea of ZCMT, let's start from the name. The, um, in RISC-V ISA extension convention, all the standard extensions starts from alphabet Z. And the C here means cosize reduction. And there are actually a set of uh, extensions that are about cosize reduction. So for example, in, uh, we have another extension called ZCMP, which uh, implements, uh, uh, specify the uh, stack push pop instructions. Yeah, and uh, M here means microcontroller. So this extension is targeting uh, embedded class CPUs due to implementation complexity. Okay. And the T here, uh, the general idea of the CMT is that we use a, a lookup look table to reduce the function jump codes. So the T here means the table. And please know that all, all the work is uh, work uh, only works for static link only. Yeah. So uh, here is a simple example. Um, okay. We have a printf code here, uh, a simple line that prints hello world, and the compiler compiles this code into two instructions to jump to printf. And the first instruction is to compute the printf address, and the other JL, JLR uh, jumps to the computed address. Uh, okay, the first AUIPC source compute the address and store the address into T, T0, and uh, JLR jumps to T0 and store the return address to RA. So this is the original code. And with CCMT, we generate a uh, Ta a table, and the ta uh, in this table we uh, source the function address in this table. And for example, uh, we have uh, uh, mem state the address is two two zero, and we have printf the address is uh, zero two one two. And after we establish this table, we can use a spatial instruction in ZCMT that calls cm.jlt. And the three here means we fetch the address from the third entry and jump to the address uh, in, in the entry. So with ZCMT, we can reduce two instructions into one instruction. That's the general idea of ZCMT. Okay. What happens to the return address? Huh? Sorry. What happens to the return address before you? 
what? Yeah, the, in the first version, the return address is stored in RA. So yeah, yeah. Uh, what happens oh. to it? Oh, okay. It, uh, by default, it just re stores to RA. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we need few thing, uh, new things uh, in the CMT e uh, extension. First, we need new instructions. and. There are actually two instructions, uh, cm.jlt and cm.jt. And there are subtle differences, but the main idea is that we uh, given a jump table index, these instructions jump to the address that's stored in the table. And also we need a re new register that stores the beginning of the jump table. And we need to uh, add a relaxation path in linker that to do the profile and create table and replace instructions, et cetera, things in link when, uh, uh, when linking. Yeah. So, um, but before we talk about uh, more details about the uh, relaxation path, we need some backgrounds that are relocation and re relaxation. So for the Relocation. The idea is that uh, we know that uh, for, if you want to compile a source from uh, compa to compile uh, to generate an uh, executable from source, you need to do compile and assemble and link. And when uh, when you're doing assembling, the assembler doesn't know the exact address of all the functions. Yeah. So uh, okay, this is a flow of uh, from. Assembler, assembly code to the executables. So uh, assembler code, uh, assembler uh, generate object code from the assembly code and a linker links all the object uh, t us to the executables. Yeah. And the linker is the, the one who knows all the address, function addresses. So what the assembler can do is to generate instructions, but to keep the address field empty and leave a message to linker. So tell the linker, so, hey, linker, uh, please look up the address of printf and fill the address, fill the empty for me. That's uh, what relocation do. And I'll have us, uh, I'll talk about, um, I'm, I'm, I need to talk about the function jump in risk five a little bit for later. Okay, and usually in RISC five, we we use two instructions to do function jump, uh, to to jump to a function. Uh, it's a PC relative thirty two bit address. Uh, so the first instruction is AUI PC, and we have RD and uh, and uh, immediate field. So what this instruction do is to add up immediate 20 bits to PC and store and store the result into RD. Yeah. So the operation is to we'll shift the immediate uh, 12 bits and add to PC and store the result into RD. And the other instruction is JLR. And what this instruction do is to store the PC plus four, that's the return address to RD. And uh, uh, set PC to the RS1 plus the offset that is jumped to, means to jump to the address, to the target address. So you can imagine that uh, the 32-bit uh, address, the high 20 bits are formed by AUI PC, and the lower 12 bits are formed by JLR. Okay, and below is a simple, ex simple example that we want to jump from this PC to this printf. So the PC is now uh, 1000, and this AUI PC, what this AUI PC do is to set zero as uh, 1000 plus 200, and the result is 3000. And then the JL JLR instruction uh, jumps to PC by 1830 plus 4 and set PC to that value. So after this instruction, the PC will be jumped to the beginning of printf. Okay, so when we need to do relocation, uh, 
um, assembler doesn't know the address of target symbol. So it leaves a note for linker and say, hey, the, the node here is a recovery location in, info. And linker use this info, uh, relocation info to fill the immediate fields of AUIPC and JLR. And you can actually uh, use object dump dash dr and with the object file to print assembly code with relocation info. Here is a simple um, example here. Um, we want to jump to printf, but we don't know the address, so we have uh, some relocation info here. The first thing is, uh, where is the relocation? So after we look up the address of printf, where, where we need to fill the, 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 the computed value. And the green one is uh, relocation type. Uh, because we have many types of relocations, for example, this is a function jump, and Another uh, relocation type might be uh, you want to load global data. So we use a different relocation type to distinguish different types of relocation. Yeah, and this is the target symbol. OK, so uh, the uh, in relocation is info here is, is to find uh, the meaning is that we need to find the address of printf and calculate the needed numbers for risk five call relocation type and fill the instructions in 10 and actually 14. Okay, uh, okay uh, I, I talked about this before. So we might have a uh, function call and global data, et cetera, situations that we need relocation type. So, uh, yeah, for, for risk five call linker uh, re relocation type, we, uh, linker needs to find the address of target symbol and combine, uh, compute the offset between relocation and the symbol's address, and then fill the immediate field of AUIPC and JLR. And there are actually uh, many different types of relocations, and you can follow this link to for more comprehensive list. Okay. And in an ELF object file, there is actually a RELA section that stores all the relocation info. So um, there might be a lot of notes from assemblers and the nodes are actually stored in this section and the table looks like this. Uh, this is the relocation address and relocation type and target symbol. So um, here's the result of the resolved relocation example here. So before we have everything zero here in the two instructions. And after the relocation is resolved, we can, uh, these numbers are filled. But you can see that this AUIPC field is still zero because the because uh, this distance is actually not too far. You can on, you can just only uh, you can only use one instruction to jump to that function. So there is another instruction in RISC Five that called JL that you can use to jump to a shorter distance and. We can actually replace these two instructions with one JL instruction, and that is relaxation. And I'll talk about more later. Any questions so far? Uh, I is on the previous slide. Uh, LC zero. Uh, how how does does it relate to the printf? I, I missed that. Um, LC zero. These are. Um, for global symbols, they are generated from compiler, and these actually are because we are printing a hello world. So these these uh, these symbols are the are are the address of the hello world string. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but because this is not important in this presentation, so I'm not. Go, uh, I didn't uh, okay. tell details about about them. Yeah.
do you re reduce tail call optimizations when the return address has already been saved and uh, you are relatively certain that the destination is not used for recursion? The destination is not. No, I mean in the compiler when you want to make use of the um, table jump um, instruction. Uh, usually you can't do this if you have a tail call optimization. Yeah, so, but uh, all, all the works are done in Linker. This is not the compiler optimization. Uh, Kito has. Yeah, for the DCNT, there is provided two variant and uh, for the infraction. Could you check? Yeah. Huh. Uh, for the two infraction, yeah. JLT is for the, if you want to re, uh, keep your return address, and the, for the JT is for the tail call, which you will just discard the return address. Yeah, so there is provided two variant for a uh, normal function call and the tail call, yeah. Okay. It is not a problem because uh, the trial recursion is already long jump to instructions which will be converted to cm.jt. So it will work, what you are asking for. Okay, so. Okay, so the concept of relaxation is that um, in risk 5 there are actually more than one way to do the function jump. Uh, one is the, one of them is AUIPC plus JL, J A L R, and this uh, uh, jumps to a side uh, 32 bits PC relative address range, and the other one is J L. This jumps to a side 21 bits PC relative address range. But um, when compiler generates the assembly code, it doesn't know how far is the the jump would would be so. It chooses the most conservative way, that is AUIPC plus JLR. But if the target is not too far, Linker can, re can replace AUIPC and JLR with JL. That's the concept of relaxation. Hey? And it doesn't remove the AUIPC, but just uh, zeros it out. Yes? That was like on the previous slide. Uh, AIPC is still zero, but it still exists. Oh, this, uh, this is not relaxed yet. Okay. This is the result of re relocation, but not relaxed yet. Oh, yeah, that, uh, yeah that's before. Yeah, the yeah, before, yeah. I understand. Okay, so this is there after re relaxed. Yeah. So previously we see that uh, instruction, uh, these two instructions, and this is zero. And if we compute the uh, jump address and the target address, it's actually pretty small much uh, yeah, pretty small. So we can replace these two instructions with JL and yeah, we can reduce the call size here. And previously uh, the object dump with relocation, we see that there is actually a, a risk five relax paired with risk five call, this one. And Linkers uh, only do relaxation if the relocation is paired with this re uh, relax relocation type. Um, and this relocation type means a uh, linker is able to delete bytes for relaxation. And most targets like x86 or ARM and other architectures, they just insert knob to the relax in in instructions. So it reduce instruction count, but not reduce the call size. Yeah. Okay. okay, now we have the background, so we can forward to the implementation. 
uh, let's have a quick recap here. So we have a simple program that calls printf and compiler generates two instructions. And we can create a table that stores the function addresses and use a spatial instruction here to jump to the address that stores in the table. That's the general idea of ZCMT. So uh, in ZCMT, we have two new instructions. And this might answer the question before. Uh, we have two instructions that uh, this one is for direct jump or telco. This will not store the return address to the RA. And this one, JLT, uh, AL means jump and link. So uh, we, th with this instruction, the, the return address will be stored to RA. And both, both instructions are 60, 16 bits long. OK, and we need to create a vector table, uh, a jump vector table. And it, uh, in spec, it has uh, 256 entries. And the first uh, 32 entries are for cm.jt, and the others are for cm.jlt. Also, we need a CSR that to, in, in, to store the start address of uh, JVT and the uh, CPU use this, use this register to compute the offset of different indexes. And also we need linker relaxation paths for ZCMT. Okay. Um, the cost of ZCMT is that uh, we need, because we need to create a jump, ta jump table, so uh, we need additional storage here. And also, the performance is uh, might be affected because um, you can imagine that uh, this two, this instruction is actually combined to operations that are memory load and uh, jump operation. So, a trivial hardware implementation is to combine uh, to to separate the operations into microcode and use uh, a longer uh, pipeline to to do this. To, to implement this operation. Yeah. OK. The relaxation, uh, relaxation steps are, first, we need to scan through all the relocations from all the input objects. And then we record the candidates of all the possible uh, jump targets and do the rank. And if we, after compute, we, we found out that we can benefit from ZCMT, then we can replace the instructions and create the table. And, uh, so in, in our, imp yeah. in our imp uh, implementation, we use a record table to, to record all the candidates here. And in the table, we need to record uh, the target symbol name uh, for example, the printf, and we need to know which object hold the symbol. So, for example, the printf is, it might be in libc.a, and uh, we need to also record the symbol index in, in the symbol table. And we use a, a, a field to, to, to accumulate the ZCMT benefit of the function. And Please know that uh, we separate cm.jt and cm.jlt uh, uh, record table here. So here's a, a uh, example. Uh, we in hello.o we called printf. So the uh, relaxation pass scan through the, the relocation table and found out we have a call here. So it records this in, into the record table, and because this printf is implemented in libc.a, so um, here we store the object file as libc.a and the symbol index one here. And each call, each, uh, each replacement with uh, ZCMT instruction, we can have six bytes of benefit here. How is that computed is that um, we are, since we are replacing instructions, so we can just compute the before and after uh, instruction lens here. So for a risk five call, uh, before we have AYPC that is four byte and JLR 
that is also four bytes, and we convert this into cm.jt or jlt. That's two bytes. So the benefit will be four plus four minus two. That is six bytes. Okay, and there is another relocation type that we can do the relaxation here. That is uh, risk five JL. So uh, it is done by replacing a JL instruction into CM instructions, and that's four bytes minus two bytes. The benefit would be two bytes. But uh, we actually we also need to consider the opportunity cost of other relaxation. Yeah. And uh, in previously, we, we talked about that this can be relaxed into uh, CM .J, uh, CMT instructions, or we can be relaxed into JL. And we only want to apply this uh, CMT relaxation uh, if it wins, outcomes the JL relaxation here. So we need to do a little bit calculation here. The benefit of uh, this, uh, okay, uh, let's assume that the function is called n, n times. So the, for the ZCMT relaxation, the benefit would be uh, 4 plus 4 times n minus uh, 2n plus this red part. Uh, this is the uh, jump table entry size. So the result is this. And for if we relax these two instructions into JL, JL the benefit will be two, uh, four and bytes. So we want the CMT relaxation to uh, win, wins JL relaxation. So the more times a function is called, the more benefit the CMT gains. And so we want this to be larger than this. And blah blah blah. After a, series of calculation, we can know that for RV22, n must be larger than 2, and for RV64, n must be larger than 4. Yeah, this is where, uh, okay, so this is the, how, how we compute the benefit of this EMT. And after that, after we scan through all the relocations, we have established uh, two tables, one uh, two record tables, one for cm.jt and the other for cm.jlt. And the following part is simple. We just sort this benefit field, uh, sort the table with this benefit, and choose the best uh, uh, best entries to uh, to create the table. That's simple. So uh, if we do all the calculation and found out, okay, the total benefit is greater than the table size, then we can just apply the, apply the DCMT relocation here. So we can just create a table and may, there is another opportunity to uh, further reduce the cost, uh, the, the cost of DCMT is that we can actually trim empty ZCM, uh, CM JLT entries if it is not used. So, for example, if we only use two, we ha only have two uh, cm.jlt entries, we can remove the following entries of the table. So we can save a little bit more size here. And we cannot train uh, cm.jt entries because they are consecutive. So if I re remove some part of the cm.jt uh, entries, the, we cannot compute the offset correctly. Huh? Can't you start the JT table at the end, so you'd leave ta uh, entries at the top uh, empty and you just point the start of the table um, before the actual table? Uh, can you, you can make uh, uh, JT table go upwards and JLT go downwards, basically. You could, if you want. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That's a good point. And yeah. Hmm. But it makes the computation of the address more complex because one time you need to invert uh, the index and subtract it, and in other cases, yeah. Oh. Uh, 
It was just a flurry. The early should be good to the next second. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So um, if the user want to uh, use uh, CCMT, they actually need to do some other things. So first, you need to add this section, risk5.jvt section in the linker script, uh, because this is where the table stores. And it can be easily uh, put at the end of the text section. And also, we need to expose a symbol, uh, JVT based this symbol in linger script because we need to tell uh, we need to uh, uh, tell the code where to where is the where is the start of the table and we need uh, some more, few more lines of code in uh, CRT in CRT zero to set JVT CSR here so yeah this uh, here is. We use the symbol exposed by linker and set the JVT register here. And we have uh, more details in this uh, PSABI doc. Um, excuse okay. me, uh, hey. but this would all be part of, say, uh, Binet Hills port, so it would be required changes for the Binet Hills port maintainers. Man. They they should write this as part of the standard script. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's not really uh, used. Yeah, no, not uh, yeah. Add a, a a a compile option, and you can use it. No, you have to add these things. Okay, and now we can have some interesting benchmark result. <laughs> oh, we use auto bench here and. We have uh, many different uh, programs in the auto bench, and this column is the call size without ZCMT, and this is the call size with ZCMT. So we would expect that this column is smaller than this column, and this this is the differences between uh, no ZCMT and ZCMT. So. Uh, no ZCMT minus ZCMT, so this should be positive, means we have call size reduction. But the uh, rows with red color are that we have actually larger call size with ZCMT. That is totally unexpected. Yeah, and with even with we have some call size reduction, the call size. The percentage is so small that, um, yeah, so small that we also didn't expect that. So what happened? Uh, I compared the binaries line by line, and uh, I found that all comes, all the increases comes from the alignment. So we have uh, re here we have replaced JL with. JLT here. We do have the re relaxation here, but we have an uh, additional knob here that negate the effect of the CMT instruction. And this is the assembly in the in this code that we have many alignment uh, in, uh, direct direct uh, macros here. Yeah, and this is another example that we until this point we saved a. Uh, 134 bytes here, but after, uh, yeah, and here, the, the address is the same now, because we have a very large alignment requirement here. And uh, this code is from our internal uh, um, BSP code, and I, I think they they do they have this alignment restriction because of some performance requirement or whatever. So yeah, here's a very large uh, alignment requirement. So the benefit is just gone. And here is another example that uh, we have uh, section alignment in linker script. So we have some gain here, but 
after uh, we have gained in an IT section, but the the text section alignment just cancelled it. Yeah. So the summary is that uh, ideally, DCMT can reduce call size, but and and the the more function calls, the more function uh, the more reductions. Especially we are calling a small limited set of functions many times. But in reality, the alignments and other uh, the al alignments might negate the benefit we gain from ZCMT. And this is hard to calculate the effect of alignment at link time because you don't know you have to yeah you don't know what what's the alignment uh, all around yeah. And also uh, the performance impact is. Uh, need to be considered. We have seen about 1% slower for call mark in our simulation. So, disclaimer. This, I'm not the one who proposed this extension. So don't, don't blame me, I, I just implemented it. <laughs> so you have better ideas, talk to the author. Yeah. OK, so finally we have uh, Another alternative uh, extension that is being discussed, that is uh, ZCMI. The concept is uh, similar. Uh, we, uh, this extension also established a table, but instead of storing the uh, function address, we, the, uh, this extension stores instructions directly. So here's the, uh, here's the simple example that we have two instructions. Uh, so, and we found out this load T0 for uh, T3. This instruction used a lot. We can store this instruction into here, into the table. And with ZCMI relaxation, we can use a, a new instruction that calls CMI LUT to fetch the instruction from the table and execute the instruction directly. Yeah. So we are basically uh, replacing a 32-bit instruction with a 16-bit uh, instruction. Yeah, and one thing that interesting that interesting is that since this uh, table is 32 bits long, we can actually store two 16-bit uh, instructions in the in the table, and you, you can actually execute two instructions here. So that's all for today. Any questions? Why is uh, why is the state the table split at this weird value like thirty two, uh, and be between the instructions? Is there like some encoding thing going on there? I mean, why why this is thirty two bit? No, no, no. Why the why the uh, jump vector in, mm, table is split at thirty two between the instructions? Oh, you mean yeah, this yeah, one? Yeah, this, this thing. Uh, I think they... I do not know, but I expect the reason. Because the uh, difference between the uh, GALT and uh, GT is in the uh, index. Yes. I expect that it is encoding, that you have only one opcode, and according to the index, it defines if it is... Uh, jump and link, or if it is jump only. Mm -hmm. Is the reason? Yeah. No, no? I, I, I would expect it. Um, so these uh, alignments, are they due to the instruction set, or are they like other things? It has to be aligned this way at Linux boot time or something? I mean, are they required? Where, where do they come from? Where do they come from? Uh, this, uh, this assembly code is written, uh, uh, handwritten assembly code. So uh, the author did this, but I don't know why. Uh, excuse me, I didn't catch. Uh, this is a handwritten assembly. Handwritten assembly. This one. Oh, OK. So somebody just threw in yeah. a line four and didn't really know what they were doing. Yeah, but I okay. don't know why. And this is also handwritten as assembly code. This should be dependent on optimized. This should be dependent on optimized uh, 
size or rather optimal speed. And um, it would be interesting. Well, you can write the assembler codes that it checks the uh, optimization level. And it would be interesting to see the benchmark results of just the uh, performance required alignments are reduced if this gives a better bang for the back in terms of code size reduction for speed penalty. Mm -hmm. Or for me, for example, it would be interesting to see the benchmark if you have full application on the Nutix operating or Zephyr operating system and take it and see what is the real, real result. Because I think that, okay, I do not like the extension so much, but I think that it would have a big, big advantage. <laughs> mm -hmm. such. Uh, but but uh, this is not for, uh, I think this is not, it's for pyramidal applications, so. If you, if you had an operating system, you would have to save and restore the table start pointer. Well, yeah, but, but those are the small operating system where everything is linked together. RTMS, Nutix, Zephyr, those uh, linked together application, and it is small RTOS for, uh, for MCUs. So basically, you can do the global setting of the table for everything. It is no problem. Is there any hardware shipping with that extension already? Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would. Yeah, it would be interesting to. Uh, like use uh, use a, as a benchmark a compiled application that is not yeah. relying on handwritten assembly that much to mm. see if that uh, reduces the code size. Yeah, but yeah, in our company, all uh, we have the applica test applications that are, have many handwritten assembly codes. So yeah, I have no not much resource to do the benchmarks or. It seems that uh, CMJT um, th can't actually get a lot of benefit because you only have the 32 entries. So I wonder if the number of gates used um, actually pays off in terms of ROM location saved. It seems rather expensive for the size gain you could possibly have, even if you had a linker that relaxes properly and takes the alignment into account so it doesn't increase the code size. If it was a larger application, then you would need more table entries, uh, so 32-bit instruction and larger table. So you mean we might change the table size based on the... Yeah, the number of entries. Yeah. Benefit. I, I don't think this would have yeah. much. But, uh, uh, but there is not big prospect uh, to use 32-bit uh, instruction to index to the table because if the project is not so big, then it fits to two megabytes and then you can relax to standard uh, jump and link. So at least it is my... Yeah, that's why it's, it's, it's a strange trade-off. So extensions stretch. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if okay. maybe there is that another extension which I think that can have uh, the big benefit and it is that uh, um, uh, entry uh, prolog epilog uh, condensation in the, I, I do not remember the name at this moment, but I think that it was this one when the presentation started, and it can have big benefit, I think, but it makes the processor quite complex, switch from risk to complex instruction set in the fact. This is that, uh, that you can uh, specify that you want to store some set of the registers to the stack by one instruction, if, if you know 
this, this extension in this uh, I think I you are talking ZCMP. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I do. push pop, uh, yeah. Uh, do, you have, uh, okay. do you have some benchmark for that extension? Because I think that this, this can can make a program much, much shorter. Yeah, uh, we have some benchmark about uh, for ZCMP. Yeah. Yeah, push, push pop instruction, and it did, it did reduce the code size definitely. Yeah. It, it, there's no other uh, overhead like uh, the, the table or other things. I suspect that this uh, extension also reduces code size quite a bit. So yeah, the, the reductions are like that, but uh, the alignment will, will eat it like in any case. So uh, the, the improvements is actually on the linker and not on the ISA extensions. And for the benchmarks, uh, Tarek Court has done some many pre uh, tests in GitHub process reduction. Um, you can find that report, and there exist many benchmark results like uh, uh, Zipper, uh, Google V8, and uh, many others. Uh, you can, if you're interested, you can find uh, more details in the repo. Yeah, I think that's all for today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.